in this video we'll talk about sandwich eliza in other videos we talked about different other types of eliza all are linked in the i button so let us have a quick overview of sandwich eliza so what does this assay measure this assay actually measures antigen which is sandwiched between two layers of antibodies so overall we are looking at antigens what is the principle of this assay obviously any elisa assay is based on antigen and antibody interaction what is the advantage of this assay this particular assay is highly sensitive 2 to 5 time more sensitive than direct or indirect versions of elisa and it is also highly specific because it uses two types of antibodies capture and detection antibodies in a moment we would be learning more about the principles of sandwich elisa so in sandwich elisa the first part is the capture antibody so this antibody is basically coated on the microtiter plate and we know which particular antigen we want to detect so we know in this case we want to detect this red antigen from a complex mixture of antigens so our capture antibody would capture the antigen at the first place and the second part is basically the detection antibody most often this detection antibody is often enzyme linked in case there are no conjugated antibodies one can use the combination of primary and then enzyme linked secondary antibodies as well but this detection antibody detects another epitope on these target antigen so then substrate is provided and product is formed generally the product is colored and the color change can be detected uh, by colorimetric methods so this particular arrangement of antigen and antibody interaction is very much like a sandwich both these antibodies are like the bread and this particular target antigen is like the filling inside so that is why it is known as the sandwich elisa i hope this is now clear now you can see that it is important to note that the capture antibody and the detection antibody both detect the same protein but different epitope on the protein epitope are small portions of any protein and these epitopes are actually detected by antibodies so the first and foremost criteria for sandwich elisa is non overlapping epitope and mostly monoclonal antibodies are used for these kind of assay so one need a good pair of non overlapping capture and detection antibodies for a successful competitive uh, for a successful sandwich elisa assay and the equipments that are required for sandwich elisa is basically a plate reader which would basically look at the colorimetric change in the plate then there is 96 well plate where the elisa assay is performed pipettes and samples these are obviously required for this particular elisa assay so it's not very complicated it can be done uh, on a day to day basis on a uh, on a lab and it's just required a bench top instrument so imagine this is basically the sample which is mostly patient serum and this would have the antigen mix that means it might have the antigen that we are looking at but also other kind of proteins embedded within the same mixture but our target is this particular red protein in this case so now we are looking at the elisa plate and try to understand what is exactly happening in one elisa plate so obviously you have to coat the plate with capture antibodies overnight such that there is a nice coat of capture antibodies on the bottom of the plate then the patient sample is provided in this well so basically the patient sample is a heterogeneous mixture of different proteins and different antigens and we are expecting that our antigen of interest that we want to detect is present in this mixture so if it is present it would bind to these capture antibodies and then we have to remove all of these uh, unnecessary proteins that are present in the patient serum so all the unbound proteins are washed away in several wash steps then the secondary uh, capture antibody uh, sec secondary detection antibody is provided 
So these detection antibody is often conjugated, as I said, it has an enzyme at its FC region. So obviously, after providing the secondary antibody and washing the unbound fraction, the substrate is provided. Obviously, if the enzyme is present and the binding happened properly, then substrate would be converted into color product. So obviously, color would develop. And this color change would be detected in a plate reader. So let's talk about the pros and cons of sandwich ELISA. So it is highly sensitive and highly specific. But there are disadvantages. So antibody optimization can be difficult for sandwich ELISA. Sometimes there is cross reactivity between capture and detection antibodies. So obviously a lot of standardization is required for this particular ELISA method, but it is highly sensitive. Given that it is highly sensitive, it has multiple clinical application. It is used to detect infectious disease like let's say HIV, hepatitis, COVID-19, etc. It could be also used to detect hormone levels, let's say thyroid hormone or HCG levels. It can also be used to detect cancer biomarkers, for example, prostate specific antigen in case of prostate cancer. It can also be used to detect uh, autoimmune disease. Um, autoimmune antibodies can also be detected in these assays. Now let us take a specific example to understand it better. Let's say there is kind of like a inflammatory disease where the TNF alpha, which is a potential inflammatory mediator is increased in the patient blood. So our question is whether TNF alpha is basically present in the patient serum. And if present, how much it is present? We want to quantify that. So in order to do that, the starting material is patient serum and we now have to perform the sandwich ELISA. We know what we are looking at. We are looking at TNF alpha. So obviously there are two scenarios. In one scenario, TNF alpha is present in the syrup and that is why we are detecting TNF alpha. And in another scenario, TNF alpha is absent. So there would be no color reaction in this particular sandwich ELISA. So based on the color reaction and OD, we would understand how much concentration is there. So since we are looking at TNF alpha, we would have a standard of TNF alpha at different concentration. And we would first measure those concentration to create a standard curve. Then the patient sample is compared with respect to that standard curve and the OD corresponding to the patient sample is extrapolated to get a concentration range, most often nanogram or picograms per ml. Now let's say we have multiple patients and we can now compare and con contrast how much is the concentration of TNF alpha in terms of nanograms per ml, let's say. So this is how one particular protein or antigen in patient serum can be detected using the sandwich ELISA. So I hope this video was illustrative and informative enough. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Get notes and flashcards in our Facebook page and Instagram page. All the links are provided in the description. You can support our channel using Super Thanks, which is basically a heart shape icon with a dollar sign in it, present in the uh, bottom right corner of each videos. Your a small contribution is our motivation. So see you in next video.